Hi everyone, let's look at my bullish and bearish Elliott wave scenario on the low time frame and the micro for Bitcoin, starting with the first structure being an ABC, which is a 535 wave move, where the most common target for a wave C is in between the 1 and the 1.236 trend based Fib extension taken from the high of A to the low of A to the high of wave B. Now, this starts to become more and more an alternative scenario for me the longer we're gonna range at the lows over here, because this wave C starts to take very, very long compared to to this wave A. Like in time, this wave C takes a lot longer to form compared to a wave A. And usually in an ABC scenario, wave A and wave C are quite similar in price meaning the deepness of price so that is like the one to one to the 1.236 as well as the time it takes to develop wave c compared to wave a but if i take the trend based fib time over here from the beginning of a to the low of a to then the high of b you can see that this wave c currently already takes much much longer than the time it took to develop wave one which is not necessarily something i really enjoy seeing in an abc scenario now the maximum target for a wave C is the 1.618, but that is a very rare target sitting at 26.8k and if price would go all the way down here, also with the fact that this wave C takes a lot longer compared to a wave A, probably an impulsive structure is much more likely. And that is then also the alternative scenario that I have over here, where we are looking at this structure as an impulsive five wave move to the downside. And if this then is a five wave move to the downside, then the medium time frame scenario has to be something like a W, X and then an A, B, C over here where this is a five wave move to the downside. Then in this wave B, we have a complex correction in a W, X, Y, X, Z reaching the 886, which is a common target for a wave B and a rare target for a wave two in case you think this is a one, two and then eventually a three, four, five. The 886 is a rare target for a wave two. So therefore a wave B is preferred. And then now we're looking for this being a wave C to the downside where the most common target for this wave C again is between the one and the 1.236. And we already kind of ranged or wicked inside this area. But as you can see, the 1.236 is, uh, is sitting at 27K. So it's a lot deeper than the target for this ABC over here. And also what I like about this is that the triple bottom wicks, basically the lows over here are inside this target area for a wave C. So price could then use this as a one, two, three, ranging in a four, then a wave five, take the lows before then a reversal to the upside. That is definitely something I'm looking for at the moment. And if we then dissect this impulsive move to the downside, this is what I'm looking at. So this is then a wave one, followed by a wave two, and then we have a one, two, three, four, maybe, or one, two, three, four, five, and then this being a wave three, currently ranging then in the blue wave four for eventually a wave five to the downside. And what I think is interesting is the news that is coming up tomorrow. So if I actually open the news, then tomorrow we have news coming up at 2.30 p.m., which is Central East European time. We have the CPI data over here, and it could be interesting for the low of wave five to be made right at the news at 2.30 p.m. So I'm on a one hour time frame. That's why it says 2 p.m., uh, but maybe on the 30, there you go, 2.30 p.m. So the moment, we, like we're gonna be ranging here in a wave four, bit up, bit down, bit up, the daily naked point of control and the 382 is definitely an area of interest over here for maybe the high of a wave four. For then they move to the downside for a wave five and the low of this wave five, how interesting would it be if the low of this wave five and the lows being taken of the triple bottom is gonna happen around 2.30 p.m. Central East European time tomorrow. You gotta check your own time zone. So price is wicking down and then bam, moving to the upside, which is then the end of this impulsive structure to the downside. That is definitely an interesting scenario on this impulsive structure to the downside and then a five wave move. And if we then zoom in, even more locally to the price section that we have at the moment and actually move to the 15 minute time frame. then what are we looking at, right? We're looking at a move to the upside and one can count a five wave structure in this move to the upside and then this being a one, two, three, four, five wave move. Now, currently we are then in a corrective structure, which is then a wave B. So looking at this, if this is then a wave four, right? In the impulsive structure with the blue four over here around the daily naked point of control, I'm looking at this to potentially be a ABC zigzag. So that is then a five, three, five wave move. And the reason why I have wave B over here and not yet finished is actually because of the bearish divergences that we have very, very locally. So this is the 15 minute time frame, And then on the AGGR 
chart where you can see the divergences, the yellow and the blue line. And if we take a look at the yellow line over here, you can see that from the high, we make lower highs on price. But if you look at the yellow CVD line, we are making much higher highs on the CVD. So lower highs on price, higher highs on the CVD. That is a bearish divergence where the target for this bearish divergence is the lows over here. So the moment these lows are taken, this bearish divergence has played out and potentially that could then be the, uh, well, the, the, and a little bit of extra fuel for then the upside, right? The bearish divergence is playing out, lows are taken, and then eventually maybe taking those lows for a little bit of fuel to watch the upside, and then a five, three, and then eventually another five wave move to the upside, where again, an interesting target area for this wave C, and this then being an ABC, is in between the one and the 1.236, which currently is between 27.8K and 28K. And I pulled these FIBs from the low of A to the high of A to the potential low of this wave B around the 786, because if these bearish divergences are gonna play out and we take this low, it could be quite nice to maybe go to the 786. Of course, it doesn't have to. And if I use these FIBs, you can see the dot over here at the 786, but if price, this wave B, if it's gonna end a little bit higher, so we then move these FIBs to the upside, you can see the target for this wave C is moving. However, the daily naked point of control at 27,950 is kind of always inside the target area for a wave C, that being the 1 and the 1.236. So that is why this daily naked point of control is such an interesting target for me in, the, in this then being a potential A, three waves in a wave B, and then eventually a wave C to the upside. If we then look at the more bullish scenario, because that of course is the bearish scenario, because we expect then a wave five to the downside, right? Where then eventually we take the uh, triple bottom. But if we then look at the bullish scenario and we zoom out for a second, because then I have to do this as well. In the bullish scenario, the low would already be in. So if we take this as then the impulse over here, then wave three was over here, wave four was made right there and then wave five at the lows over here. Now, I don't really like this scenario and the reason is that this wave four is very, very short compared to this wave two. Usually a wave two is shorter than a wave four. In other words, usually a wave four takes longer to form than a wave two. But in this scenario, this wave four is shorter in time compared to this wave two. So that is why I prefer the more bearish scenario. But in the bullish scenario, the wave five is basically already in. So that is why I do have a low time frame or actually micro scenario that is going to be bullish. So of course, I'll repeat myself that the bearish scenario is preferred, but the potential bullish scenario is that this is a wave one over here, followed then by a corrective wave two. Again, we have the bearish divergences. So taking this low could be quite nice for then putting in the low of this wave two for then eventually a wave three to the upside, which then of course goes a lot higher than the daily naked point of control that we have at 27. 0.950, uh, which actually is not there, it's over here. So then we would break this daily naked point of control for sure, because we expect much, much higher prices and then a one, two and a bigger three to the upside. So that being said, I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the macro and the high time frame video if you're interested. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing and I will see you at the next one. Bye bye.